Welcome back, Axe friends. YouTube is a cruel mistress, and the appetite for Axe science is apparently insatiable among the people. So we've taken up some new research questions. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thanks for the views. Thanks for the great comments. I hope everyone's learning something. I'm learning a lot. Boy, it takes a lot of time. It really does take a lot of time. I did a tutorial a couple months ago, file sharpening an ax, right, with a file. And something happened in the last 60 days or so. The thing's just blown up. And I, you know, I can't even believe there's that many people in the world filing axes with files. That's incredible. <laughs> Quite a few people watch that video, so maybe there is interest in axe science. Maybe Axe Science has a future. So we're looking at some new research questions, which came out of our last series, which was called The Efficient Axe. If you didn't get a chance to watch that, at least watch the first and the last episode. Kind of sums up uh, the purpose of that series, which was to test uh, the axe design thoughts of a famous author of a book that a lot of people really enjoy. It was beautifully done and had a lot of strong opinions. And so we made up some axes and we took them all the way through testing phase. And it was really very interesting. So if you watch the series finale, you'll know that the axe that won the axe arena there at the, at the final uh, had attributes that were a lot different than those advocated by Dudley Cook, the author of the axe book. And uh, I was really impressed, really impressed by, by that axe and just the way it chopped in a variety of different tasks and applications. And it got me thinking about, well, why did I like that so much? What's going on with that axe? And it actually made me think about a phenomenon I think I have observed, notice that, you know, couching it in science terms. I think I have observed a phenomenon. It may not be true, but I think I have observed a phenomenon online and in forums and social media about people who really like axes and people who use them a lot, but it refers to kind of people's favorite axe. They tend to call them the work axe. This is my work axe. I've seen this a lot. Oh, my work axe is this. My work axe is that. It's sort of the favorite one. Even if they're collectors, you know, like me, and they got a million, you know, it's sort of like the one when you're doing a tough job, you want a tough job, you want to have a good time doing that tough job, that's the ax you pick. And it makes sense because anyone that has multiple ax choices to go fell a tree or process some firewood or something, you know, they're gonna have a favorite, like this is my favorite, all right? But here's the thing, and this has happened enough uh, that it's caught my eye, and it's happening to me as I go through ax arenas and compare all these very different axes, Often this favorite axe, this work axe, the one you want to grab off the racks and just go do the job with, is a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter than the typical felling axe that you can buy. It's like not that. Now that just could be because, you know, people modify axes and play around with them and then get something they love and then tell us about it online. Whereas people who are perfectly content and love the felling axes you can buy online or in a store, aren't doing the same, so, right? So it's sort of like a phenomenon that's not real. And I'm sort of wondering, is the work ax just a nickname we give favorite axes? Or is that a kind of category, an ax category? Because like any other tool, any other product, there are categories of axes, all right? A hatchet is different than a felling ax. Those are just two totally different categories of axes. I mean, they're both in the, right? They're all in the ax family, in the evolutionary tree. A hatchet is a small ax, generally only usable with one hand. A felling ax, though, is a full-size ax meant for full wood processing tasks. But even then, there's some variation. Felling axes could be giant wood cutting monsters, or they can be fairly spelt lower weight axes that have a felling axe purpose. My point isn't what is a hatchet, what is a felling axe, but that those are categories. Those are categories of axes that are kind of universally recognized as having some meaning. A felling axe generally is expected to be about a three and a half pound head today. You know, if you go out, look at all the manufacturers, three and a half pounds is about right. Now they can come down a little bit of weight and they can go, go up quite a bit in weight and they'll still call that a felling axe. The handle can be anywhere from 28 inches in some cases up to 36 inches in some cases for a felling axe. But what I've noticed just within, you know, people who really like axes is that often the favorite ax, the one they call the work ax, is a little shorter, has a little shorter handle, and often is a little underweight 
than what we expect, right? Kind of like our Dudley Cook Axe Arena winner, three pounds, 29 and change on the handle, just feels right, right? Maybe for a chopper of my skill, for you know, average height and build, whatever, I don't know. I'd like to try that concept with some other axe designs to see if there is kind of maybe a middle category, it's that work axe. It's not as heavy and as big as the felling axes, but certainly isn't as small as, you know, a camp axe or a boy's axe. Very niche axe science, axe friends. Very niche. Yes, axe friends, someone must research these pressing issues on our society, and I'm happy to be the guy. And maybe you should watch just to see all the stock we're gonna bring up to address these issues. These are purchasable axes, and I think they're kinda in this category, a little shorter, a little lighter. Not entirely, not entirely. The Basque Axe, all right? The Oregi Basque Axe, and this thing, that needs some science, okay? This this contraption, the still universal pro forestry axe, much to say about that. I'm bringing it back because I also have some project axes, some stuff I've just made here, okay, that are in this category. These are kind of, these are kind of killers here. The True Temper Kelly Perfect Jersey Pattern Axe. And I've tricked it out to the danger zone. Uh, danger zone is back. That is an 18 degree hand ground uh, bevel on that. 2.75 pound Holtzbrook Swedish Army uh, Yankee or Dayton pattern head. Plus some really sweet new project axes that we're going to tune up really nice. But we are out of time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.